Hey, welcome back, friends and neighbors, to another edition of Somewhere Downrange, and I am your host, Brad Branch. Hope you guys are ready for Christmas. I'm pretty sure I am. Got most of my gifts bought, and got most of the snacks done, and all we got to do now is just wait on Christmas to get here. <laughs> Well, as I posted in the community portion of my page last night, yes, today, folks, friends and neighbors, boys and girls, children of all ages, we have a head-to-head -head championship heavyweight match going down here in a minute. Got the Kimber Custom 2, full-size 1911, and the Springfield Armory Ronin, full-size 1911, both in 10 millimeter, of course, God's favorite caliber when he can't get 45. <laughs> anyway, glad you came out. Let's talk about what we're going to do. Now, that Kimber, I've had it for a couple years, and she does a fine job. Slick gun, runs all right. I like it. Um, <laughs> I got on several waiting lists back in 2020 when the Ronins were coming out. And they figured they'd have a running out to me in a couple of months. Well, guess what? It took me damn near three full years to finally be able to put my hands on one at a price that I thought was reasonable. Jesus, they just dried up. And then when I'd look at them on Gumbroker, I'd go, hmm, nah, not me, man. So anyway, browsing through the shops the other day, and guess what I came across? Finally. Whew. So this is mainly a two-bout fight. <clears throat> going to be a championship and uh, it's probably going to come down to a decision both of these weapons ought to be fine weapons they're real close to one another in their ability to be accurate and their operation I love Kimbers some people trash them I don't know why now any government model made by any company can have issues that always can occur I've seen it happen gold cups on down to Rock Island Arms you just, if you get one that's got an issue, you fix it. You remediate that. You make it run, because it will run if it's built half ass decent. The Ronin, brand new. I ain't fired a shot through it. I don't know where the sides are shooting or nothing, but I'm not too worried about that, because all we're checking in the first round of this match will be just for accuracy. We're going to see how well they shoot. Now, I'm going to be firing two-handed with my hands on a wrist. Now, there's a reason for that. I know that some people would say, no, you need to be shooting combat style, just offhand floating out there, make sure you can shoot it accurately for that. That's true, but I want to know what type of potential accuracy is available from both of these weapons. So I'm gonna use a wrist and see which one, if either really drills or gets close to drilling, because that's gonna matter. Because one of these is going home and going in the safe once it's cleaned up. Hi, bee. Honey bee. <laughs> Just don't crawl in my ear, okay? And the other is going to get used as trade fodder for a new bank stick that I'm thinking about making. <laughs> so, the second round of this match. Round two. I wish I had some ring girls with cards, but I don't. <laughs> um, is just going to be functioning. And that ain't going to be from a rest. That's going to be functioning. We're going to be banging away at steel. Just see how it runs in combat mode. Just ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. I mean, going to town with them. So that's what we're going to do. And it will come down to a judgment call, I'm sure. But that's going to happen. So without further ado, let's get that camera angle spun around. I've got two targets down there on the backstop. One for each. The target on the left going to be for the camera the target on the right going to be for the springfield and uh may the best pistol win stand by all right folks we had a coin toss and the kimber won the toss so the first 10 rounds and we have are starting this Full magazine, nine rounds in the mag, one in the chamber. First ten rounds coming from the reigning champion, the Kimber Custom 2, on that left target. Let's see how she does.
Well, all 10 rounds, slide his lock back. All right, Springfield, now's your chance to shine. Let's see what you got, girl. And she's new, so she's a little tight. One hell of a heavy spring, though. She's going to take some wearing in. Righty then, stand by. Well, all right, so I can tell you right now, straight off the bat, Kimber seems to be doing a little better. That Springfield is brand new, real tight, and Sure, that came out of the Springfield. Well, let's go ahead and throw another magazine full through there and see if I uh, can't tone it down just a little bit. It's kind of all over the place. <laughs> this is a little better. Let's see if we can improve that any. Now, I haven't been able to do any adjustments on the sights on this, and I really don't think I have to do much other than just adjust it to hit a little further right and the Kimber's more or less where it needs to be maybe could come down an inch or so all right let's throw another magazine in and uh, see what happens stand by yep I'm pretty sure this is gonna come down to a decision now first round Kimber got to go first uh, out of general courtesy second round on this we're going to let the uh, Springfield do her thing first. All right, let's see what we get. Stand by. Yeah, she is tight. <laughs> you have to give her some love. Gonna have to give that trigger some love too. <laughs> All righty, Kimber girl, you're next. Let's see if the Kimber can keep her lead. I'm at 25 yards, so really, I'm not sure what's happening down there, but we'll find out. Stand by. Maybe it's this ammo. All 
All right. Let's check it out. All righty, things are starting to straighten out a little bit. It's getting pretty close now. Hmm, boy. This may come down to a judgment call. I think this is going to come down to... I think I'm getting a little used to the trigger now. Got a lot of them dumping in there. Kimber's really starting to shine now. You know, they're both clean. Maybe getting a little fouling, a little shooting, a little oil stuck up in them. I am getting some hang-ups with this ammunition, and I've never fired this particular ammunition out of these guns, either one of my guns before, so... <sighs> Might have to go to a different bullet profile, but I'm starting to get happier with the results on the hit. But I gotta say, Kimber, Springfield, you're going to have to step it up, Ronan. That is just a whole bunch of really tight shot group right there. It's got some good ones. There's a lot of them touching, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got a couple up here above that. So, so far, really, as far as judgment call, I'm thinking they're pretty close to equal. Dang, this could be tough. Whew. All right. Let's do a little combat shooting, what do you say? We'll move up to 15 yards, just start busting some plates. See how they run like that. Stand by. All right, so after some technical difficulties, we are back online. <laughs> so we let the Springfield go first. Now we're gonna let the camera go first. See if she can get a little vindication. We're just going to engage that steel silhouette plate offhand. And uh, without any further ado, hopefully they run good. Stand by. She ran good. All right, Springfield, can you do it? Let's find out. She is new, she is tight. I gotta give her that. That's a gimme. She'll do. I say this. More hits on target. That counts for you, girl. Stand by. Maybe the bees will follow that around instead of me. <laughs> All righty, friends and neighbors. Well, we have conferred with the judges me <laughs> and we talked about the few points you know me myself and i there's three of us and i have the uh, deciding vote <laughs> um okay let's talk about this okay so both pistols had their hiccups with this ammunition in functioning and like i said i've I only had two boxes of this. I've never shot it before. It's 180 grain. It's of a contour that both pistols ought to just love. And I, I know it's of the same contour that my hand loads are. It's a Hornady contour. And that, in my hand loads, that Kimber's never had an issue with it. It just eats them like a nine-year-old kid with a bag of M&Ms. Um, so, I'm thinking that this ammo is probably lucky to be achieving any real true velocities necessary to defeat the poundage weight of a government model spring in a 10 mil auto. Now, published velocity on this box, I didn't even look at this until just now. Uh, velocity at the muzzle, 1,030 feet per second. Well, no goddamn wonder a pistol won't work with it if it's got a 10 mil auto weight spring. 
I mean, it runs, but not like it should. So that is a factor that in the legal world they call uh, mitigating evidence. So as far as functioning goes, as they both had issues, about the same number of them, we got to call that a draw. Now, accuracy on the target. We went an extra round on that. The first round, obviously, things were a little foobar. Maybe I was just cold on the trigger. I needed a little trigger time. Because um, that was shooting more or less with my, my hands on a base rest. Just a bag. Um, we went the second round. And, whew, yeah, started drilling. Started doing a whole lot better. And at 25 yards, I'll take that every damn day. Man, ain't nothing wrong with that. As far as the size of the groups go, when I put the tape on them, <laughs> literally, they're just, it would be, you would, I'd, I'd need my calipers to find the difference in the mean average width and length of the groups on either one. <laughs> so we have another mitigating factor. And that's two factors in favor of the new girl. Really, because she's new. Then we stepped up to steel. And as you could tell from the reports and the clangs, the new girl, she got more hits. Now, I'm going to attribute it to that fact that uh, the trigger on that Springfield isn't any lighter, but it is crisper. The one thing about the Kimber trigger is it does have an infinite Testimonially small. Did I say that right? <laughs> small, just barely perceptible little kind of a glitch hit. Just and then it goes. The Springfield is just a clean, crisp break, just and it's gone. And that I attribute that to more hits on the steel. So you know, I had to think about this a little bit. Wow. Group size, really, in comparisons, was the same. Because of the ammunition being low-powered for 10 mil, and believe me, if the box says 1030, it's probably running somewhere around 950. And with a heavyweight 10 mil auto-rated weight spring, no wonder these weapons are having this problem. Now, I wish I had brought my hand loads with me. But, you know, wishing one hand shit in the other and see which one fills up the fastest. So, I've come to the decision. I cast my vote against myself and me. And have decided, although some fans may be a little bit about this that we're just folks we're just gonna have to call this a draw and have a goddamn rematch I can't help it I cannot make the decision to send one of these girls down the road based on the performance of shit ammo so I'm gonna go home I'm gonna grab my hand loads that I know are running at least 300 feet per second faster than this crap and we're going to see what we're going to see. So, folks of the sports world, sports fans, we have a rematch in the offing, and it's coming. Hopefully within the next week. <sighs> I just, it's too close. And the one mitigating factor that tears it all up is the fact that Federal 10 mil Auto 180 FMJ small primer Advertised velocity of 1030 just ain't gonna cut it. We're gonna have to go with some ammunition that I have greater faith in. So, thank you folks for stopping by. I'm glad you got to come see me. I'm glad I got to see you. Well, I can't really see you. All I can see is a camera. But I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something from it. And I tried to keep it short and sweet. 
And so without further ado, stand by in the coming week for the rematch, the heavyweight head-to-head -head rematch, using proper ammo, of the Springfield Ronin and the Kimber Custom 2 10 mil Auto Heavyweights. You guys have a great day. Have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday, however you celebrate it. And if you're feeling blue, if you're feeling a little down, I can't blame you because I've had some rough stuff the last year or two myself. It might help. Go on YouTube and Google Elton John's Merry Christmas. Elton John Ed Sheerhan. And uh, Sheerhan, Sheehan, I can't remember. I don't listen to him much. But it's one heck of an upbeat song. And that's just a shameless plug. And I'll admit it, I like Elton. I like Elton ever since he came on the scene. I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, his music was the music of my generation. Anyway, without further ado, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and stay tuned and come back and visit us for the head-to-head -head grudge match rematch. Tim Mills, Ronins and Kimbers, going back at it. And I'll be seeing you soon, somewhere downrange. Bye.